Hey guys, let's talk opposite. All right, for my first activity, I used Canva to create some opposite pictures that I cut out and taped two clothespins. So I took one half of the opposites and put it on the top of the clothespin and then set the others on the table. This is a really great fine motor activity for them to use their pincher fingers and great pre-writing practice as well. For this activity, they find what is opposite of what is taped to the clothespin and clip it inside the clothespin. The second idea I have is really simple because you don't have to pull any supplies. You have an open-ended discussion about opposites. I would call this an idea circle. So I would ask questions like, someone tell me something you can open, and then someone tell me something you can close. Tell me something loud, now tell me something quiet, and just kind of see the ideas that they come up with. The next activity talks about the opposites of going up or down, and it is great for counting practice as well. With Canva, I made a staircase on a sheet of paper and up and down arrows. Then I took a writable dice and put arrows in different colors so that the children could see that the green meant up and the black meant down. You're going to roll that die along with the number die and it tells them how many spaces they go and which direction they go up or down. Another great activity would be to have the children bring something that is opposite of each other from home. So if they can find two things that are opposites at home and bring them to school kind of for show and tell. The first art project is a night and day picture. You ahead of time are going to draw a diagonal line across your paper, give the children a cloud, sun, and moon that they can glue on their paper, and then crayons. You're going to encourage them to color the night dark, and then you can also color the light if you'd like or just leave it bright. They'll glue on their sun, moon, and cloud, and then also if you could find some star stickers, that would be great for the night side of the picture as well. The next activity is an opposite book. Now this is just something I made on the computer myself using Canva, and it's an opposite book. You're just going to divide a sheet of paper into two different sections, two different opposites, and then the children are going to draw a picture that goes with that opposite. I think this is really fun because there are things that kids can think of that we don't even think of sometimes, and it comes out as a really fun book. The next two activities are kind of similar but different at the same time. The first one is a fast painting and a slow painting. You're going to tell the children to paint one picture as fast as they can, and the next picture a little slower. Then after you're done, you can do a survey that you can post outside your classroom with the pictures and the children can tell you which one they thought was easier. You can put that on the chart for the parents to see at pickup time. Along those same lines, you can do a left-handed and a right-handed painting. Have the children paint one picture with their left hand and then paint the same picture with their right hand. And again, you can make a chart to put outside the classroom where you display the pictures and asking the children which one was easier, the left or the right. It's great to post these things outside your classroom so the parents can see the things that you're learning and doing in class as well. For your writing center, I have three ideas. The first one is a matching sheet that I made on Canva. They're going to match the pictures that are opposites by drawing a line between the two. The next activity is a light and dark drawing. You'll have pieces of paper with light and dark already written on both sides and give the kids markers or crayons and show them which side is which so they can pick out colors that are darker and colors that are lighter and color on the appropriate sides. Again, this is great pre-writing practice because coloring really helps develop those skills. The next writing activity is to trace the words up and down, but you're going to do it more than just trace it. You're going to trace the word up on top of the table, and then you're going to turn the paper over, put tape on the bottom, tape it to the bottom of the table, and have the children write the word down while they are upside down underneath the table. Other words you might like to use instead of up and down would be top or bottom. For your reading center, we typically have somewhere for the kids to sit to read books, right? But for this opposite reading center, I would make sure there is a table in the reading center and no chairs so that they're doing the opposite of what they normally do and standing at the table to read instead of sitting. And of course they can always sit if they want to rest, but encourage them to do the opposite of what they normally would do. For your home center, I have two ideas. The first one is to put foods in your home center that are hot and cold. You can put them all together and have them sort them into the hot and cold, putting the cold items in the play refrigerator and the hot items in maybe the play oven. Secondly, if you have buckets, you can put balls and buckets into the home center for them to make empty and full buckets. 
If you don't have buckets, you could also just do this with cups in the home center, giving them something to fill them and take out so that they have something full and something empty. For the block center, I would have them build tall and short towers or tall and short buildings. If you want to give them a visual of something tall or short, you can also tape some paper onto the wall to show them how tall or how short you would like a building or a tower to be. My first idea is to have snack time with healthy and unhealthy snacks. Now for this you have to be a little careful of allergies, but if you have something approved ahead of time, you could serve something healthy and something small that's unhealthy. So for example, a banana and maybe some small little candy bars or fruit snacks. Another sensory idea is to get counting cubes and build short and tall counting cube towers. This is really great for fine motor, putting the blocks together and taking them apart. And you're going to encourage them to make a tall and short building with each color and then sort them by tall buildings and short buildings. The last sensory idea is to create a water table with hot and cold water. For this idea, you want to make sure the water is really just warm and not too hot. And then you're going to have a bowl of ice cubes that they can play with in the water as well. And then also put in some scoops and cups for them to play with as well. Thanks for watching this video. And if you want to see art and activity ideas on all kinds of themes, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any ideas. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.